not in Kansas anymore. You have my curiosity. Are you telling me you built a time machine? The force will be with you. Welcome back to Get Real, the podcast where we get real about all of your favourite pop culture movies and TV shows. As with me always and always and always is my good friend, friend of the show, member of the show, co-host of the show, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing creative today, hey, I'm Chris. Chris. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> There's I a... think that was pretty creative. <laughs> Well, it we, went on and on and on anyway. Well, the reason I didn't have a specific uh, official title for you this episode is because we're covering off a whole eclectic mix of different stories this week, from news to trailers to all sorts. So, yeah, we're going a bit off off script, a bit uh, ad hoc, Yeah, there's, some would there's say. no, like, core subject. It's just... A big old news catch-up, because we got too busy with the DC films. And to be quite honest, nothing news really come out recently, so we can't really no. cover off anything still, because the Rona has still got its hands on the US, quite clearly. It's, Coronavirus. Uh, it's becoming a little bit more lenient over here in the UK. It started to... Uh, we've started to loosen our restrictions a little bit, aren't we? And We are indeed, which is very nice, I mean, trying to... It's good for our mental health, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've had a haircut, you've had a haircut, it's like, yeah. Well, I'll have a haircut tomorrow. By the time people are listening to this, they might be able to imagine what I would sound <laughs> like with less hair. Well, uh, we'll post a photo This on is Instagram. the more hairy version of me talking. <laughs> we'll, we'll just post a, a photo on Instagram of our new haircuts with no context, and it's not going to be <laughs> obvious whether we've had a haircut or not, or whether we're just posting a picture of ourselves, and it's going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, listen to next week's episode and see if you can hear the difference in my voice after my haircut. <laughs> anyway, that's our uh, <laughs> weekly coronavirus update for, for the podcast. <laughs> so we have got an absolute ton of stuff to cover off today. We have got news, we have and news and news and news and news. And we missed some bits last week as we were doing that DCEU retrospective, which we hope you enjoyed. And if you've not gone and listened to it, go back and check it out. Uh, if we're a little bit more in the future, than what we are wonder woman 84 might be coming out soon so it's a perfect time to go back and go check it out it is hopefully it ends up coming out <laughs> yeah and leave us a rating as well on uh, apple Podcasts because that's always cool oh I'm, yeah look at this i'm break i'm breaking up the convention chris i'm mentioning He's all this doing earlier. it at the beginning of the episode and at the end just to remind people twice as often you never Best know thing to do mate you never know. promote yourself self-promotion so not only are we gonna have haircuts we're gonna potentially be able to go back to the cinema as of the 4th of july in the uk which is uh, two days after this episode comes out. So we may have uh, potentially already been to the cinema if we're that eager. Yeah. But probably not. It's two days after we're recording this, so it's two days before. Is that what you said? Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, what? Lost. Lost. (laughs) Sorry, what? I Um, think I just (laughs) (laughs) time-travelled. I think I just tenanted the the shit out of this podcast. Chris is actually just listening to the podcast right now. (laughs) (laughs) What is going on? Look, I don't know. I'm tripping balls, mate. Today, I'm all over the show. We've got a show. I've had a stressful week. (laughs) (laughs) Why has it been so stressful for you? Oh, work's been manic, mate. Work's been manic. I'm about to get my own house. Like, uh, I just hit affiliate on Twitch. If you don't follow me on Twitch already. Twitch.tv forward slash Chris Captures. Sub to me on this. Sub to Twitch Prime. It's great. Like, I'm just... I don't have a second for myself. And now I need to start packing my entire life up into boxes. That's crazy. It's crazy. <sighs> and now, are you going to have, like, a little, uh, like, man cave in your new house then? It's not necessarily going to be a man cave. But we are going to have the spare room slash office den area type thing. So... Nice. Maybe a potential recording spot. For a particular podcast, maybe? Maybe. Maybe a particular podcast, indeed. Maybe uh, this podcast right here! If you had a guest. We'd have to probably wait and see and make sure that uh, before we start... I don't know whether you've already talked this through with your girlfriend, Chris, whether she's going to allow you to... (laughs) This is how I'm breaking it to... (laughs) (laughs) I had no part in this. Right, anyway, yeah. uh, Cinema's opening again in the... Cin- uh, blah blah blah. Cinemas are open. <laughs> <laughs> this episode. What is it? Why 
why are we so out of practice? <laughs> it's only been a week. Oh, God. <laughs> right. Cinemas are opening again in the UK from the 4th of July, which means that potentially we're going to be looking at stuff. Uh, I think the main thing is, is they're going to be doing re-releases and reruns of stuff, isn't it, to open up the cinemas, I believe. I believe so, yeah. So that'll be good. You know, you can go back and social distance while you watch a film. Maybe yeah. you live somewhere where there's really fancy look screenings, where the chairs are pretty much that far away from each other anyway. So it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm kind of kind of glad about the social distancing with some of the mongs that you get near you in the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just like chew so loud or they're talking through it or they got the phone on or some shit. What's your biggest pet peeve in the cinema? Um... Either people talking really loud or being on the phone with like the brightness up to max. Yeah, I think they're the main two, really, aren't they? I think the only yeah. other one that comes to mind is like when people are trying to like open a packet or something, and it's usually like <laughs> they're trying to be dead oh. quiet and it's just taking longer. <laughs> Honestly, it's one easy fix: just open your packets of stuff before the cinema, like before yeah. the the screening starts. Rather than just leaving it there, like if you're opening a pack of sweets or something, just do it. But it's it's not when people are like capable; it's when people are incapable of opening it, and they just make this fucking rustling that's just <laughs> awful. And nachos it just sounds like they're getting like a paper bag and like <laughs> and nachos. Nachos is not a cinema food. You shouldn't have oh. nachos in the cinema because it's just crunchy and you you like popcorn with your hand in it. Is not anyway. We digress. Right. Wait. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to talk on this very briefly, right? Okay. So, we we frequent Odeon. That's our normal cinema chain. It's like our local ones are mostly all Odeons. Yeah, It's a good really chain. Nice. The yeah, one yeah. near us, as you said, has had the looks upgrade. It's got nice seats. It's we got also, a bar and everything like that. We also have These a, fancy new drink machines. We also have a Cineworld, but so we're not, uh, we're not you know, there are... Oh, other, yeah, we do have a Cineworld now. Other yeah. theatre chains are available. <laughs> but... Fucking Odeon. So they do nachos and they're always on a meal deal because they're clearly trying to get more people to buy them. But fuck me, that nacho cheese is disgusting, like the smell of it. And it just stinks out the entire cinema. Do you remember that time we went to... I can't remember what we went to see. We went to see something with like Richard, Chris, and maybe a couple of the mates or something like that. And Chris got three lots of nacho cheese with his nachos. You know, you normally get like cheese, salsa, and guac or something like that. Yeah. She so got yeah. three lots of nacho cheese, and it smells disgusting. It smells like fucking minging feet. I'll be honest, <laughs> cinema food in general, because I'm not having a dig at Odeon, but cinema food in general usually isn't like that appetizing, especially when you see it coming out. <laughs> like when they have that cheese sauce and it comes out of like a plastic packet that's already yeah. pre-done. Well, that's what I mean. It's just the cheese sauce. It just smells rancid. Oh. So when he had three lots of it and he was sat next to me, he finished his nachos and he only went through one of them. So the other two were just in a pot, which he shoved under his chair. So it just fucking sank for the entire film. Do, do you remember when cinemas used to do popcorn fresh? Like they used to, it used to pop there and then, and now it comes yeah. in like bags where it's already pre-done and it just gets heated up again, doesn't it? I mean, mo a lot of places still do. I think it's just like the ones in the UK don't anymore. Yeah, because you don't have that. <laughs> like thing there are you... some of the smaller ones in the UK that still pop their own popcorn. Yeah, you don't have that thing anymore when you walk into a cinema and you like smell popcorn. That's like a weird <sighs> thing that I've not noticed since. Yeah. It might have been because it was like four months since I've last been in a cinema, but... That, that's a smell of nostalgia. That is like warm popcorn. Yeah, you don't get it anymore. Strange, isn't it? No. Yeah. Anyway, go uh, bring your own food uh, into the cinema uh, and don't support your local <laughs> theatre chain. I also, I also, I, I want to like... The reason I laughed so much when Sam started talking about nasty fucking <laughs> cinema food. One time, what was it that we went to see? Was it Power Rangers? <laughs> the 2017 Power Rangers? Uh, or was it Pacific Rim? I know exactly. Because uh, they it, came out like pretty close to each other. And they're both pretty Sam much the same. Sam came film. straight from work. He came straight from work. He hadn't ate or anything like that. So like we sit down with our drinks and everything like that and we're sat there waiting for the screening you know Odeon has like the thing it's like you've got one last chance to go get food before the film starts Sam's like fuck it I'm doing it so he legs it out and before like he's gone for about 30 seconds and he comes back in and before his ass is even on the seat he's got like the last inch of a hot dog left <laughs> he's fucking devoured it he fucking swallowed it all so Sam's talking about how Ming and cinema food <laughs> 
<laughs> no regrets. Absolutely uh, zero regrets. Such a good story. That's just like one of those cinema moments for us. But it's like whenever funny. it comes on screen now, we're like, you still got time for a hot dog? Because you tell people the story, but it is a kind of like you had to be there moment. <laughs> yeah. <for> it. <laughs> it, was, it was just the speed in which you devoured it. But it you was were so hungry. But it was also like I was really fast getting it because it was literally that when in hindsight, that bit where it comes up and says, This is your last moment, go grab food, go grab a drink or whatever. There's not a lot of time between that, really. Like if there's a <laughs> no. queue, you wouldn't bother. But I like got straight in really productive i got to the counter i was like can i have a hot dog please yeah all right do you want any do you want any extras on it no no just hot dog and then bang sauce ketchup, on. Mustard, bing, ketchup bang. mustard as soon as that last drop of mustard hit the hot dog it was first bite second bite third bite through the door fourth bite fifth bite sixth bite sit down done. <laughs> It was literally like a cartoon. It's like Scooby Doo, where he just unhinges his jaw and slides a whole baguette in. <laughs> Chris, we've only oh, this episode is trash. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best episode. <laughs> okay, what's Look, the next news story on the if list? If you if you enjoy this, then. Yeah, that's fantastic. But if you've come here for some serious podcasting, look, we're, we're, what, we're 30 episodes in. All level of professionalism has gone out the window at this point. Right, we've we've got a certain list of these stories, going but I'm going gonna, gonna to just like mix it up a little bit because I feel like the next one on the list is pretty pretty big, so we'll talk about that for a little bit. Okay, later. yeah, get the quick shit out of the way first. So, rumour mill. We have Tobey Maguire Spider-Man uh, in talks are rumours to be in Doctor a strange multiverse of madness yeah so insiders have said that he's met with the studio and he's met with sam raimi again obviously sam raimi is now directing dr strange 2 and he was the one that made the toby Maguire spider-man trilogy uh, so people's speculation as soon as he got announced was out the window we're getting toby Maguire back it's a multiverse yeah fuck it bring it all in uh, but now apparently the inside scoop is that toby Maguire has had talks with marvel um, I would fucking love to see that, even if it's just for like a split second cameo. Or I mean, something. it probably makes sense because if the film's gonna be multiverse of madness, if they do this, you can. I can kind of in my head. I don't see them bringing Tobey Maguire Spider Man and having him as like a like a co star or anything like that. No. I, I imagine like if you're gonna have him in there, and it's sometimes the case when we hear these rumors that it'll be like this crazy. Um, like the bit in Far From Home where Mysterio really messes with uh, uh, Spider-Man and he goes through all that um, big, like, you, you know what I mean, all that really big comic references and stuff to where he just drives him a little bit loopy. Like, I imagine there's going to be, like, a big multiverse moment where it's like, whoa, here's uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, here's the old Fantastic Four, uh, whoa, here's uh, <laughs> well, someone else, the that, guy who played... That's the thing, like... The guy who Marvel's played Captain so America many. who stole someone's car that time, all that sort of stuff. The guy who played Captain America who stole some guy's car? Yeah, there was the guy who played... Well, anyway, that's, that's a, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? You lost me on that one. Um, <laughs> well, I saw it in a Facebook group that it was um, Scarlet... Oh, well, hang on, let me, get my, let me get my facts straight. So Black <laughs> Widow says to uh, Captain America in one of the Marvel films, like, where did where does Captain America learn to steal a car? Or where did Captain America learn to do that? And then the post underneath of it was a really old Captain America movie, because there was one, or it was like a TV show or something. Oh, the made-for-TV movie from like the 70s yeah, or the 80s, yeah, yeah. where he's he, got a motorbike and shit. Yeah, and he steals a car in there from someone. So that was yeah. that was the reference there. Oh, okay. But well, yeah. This is what I was about to say. Like Marvel have had that many like starts and fits with different cinematic things. Like they've got an established multiverse built in, so it makes sense. Like if you want to properly have a multiverse, then just bring in just there, like yeah, they they end up in a different version of New York and like they're just like roaming around like fighting the villain or something like that, and all of a sudden fucking Toby Maguire Spider Man comes in, kicks his ass for about two minutes and then they teleport to a different multiverse or something like that like it just makes sense doesn't it yeah it'd be interesting because i mean that's not to say that you'd see toby Maguire's spider-man it might not mean sorry you might then see like the villains you might see mm -hmm. you know you might start to get links with say venom and deadpool and 
it's really interesting that the fact that they've gone multiverse of madness with the Doctor Strange film, and also we know Marvel in the past aren't afraid to like like Captain America Civil War. They did a Civil War plot in a Captain America movie. It didn't have to be yeah. like an Avengers movie or anything. So they will do that. They will make big steps in these films. So I'm pretty excited to see what form this takes. More the more the conf- confirmation that they are looking outside of the typical MCU now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Instead of just getting like Tom Holland to play three different versions of Spider-Man, yeah. like having like the Tobey Maguire, maybe Andrew Garfield or something like that. And it could also tease up maybe a future live action Spider-Verse thing. But it'll be cool as well because we already have like an established almost link to the multiverse mm. because we got J.K. Simmons back as J- Joma Jameson already. Yeah, for sure. So it, it you've sort of already got an established link to the Tobey Maguire film. So you could have it like, like, like they appear in a different version of New York and you see... Uh, J.K. Simmons there doing his classic like Raimi like like Hitler mustache type looking guy with the grey temples like bring me pictures of Spider-Man <laughs> and then like Tobey Maguire can be there and stuff like that I bring back Kirsten Dunst if she wants to do it and sh- stuff I wonder if I just have like little Spider Man will have quite like I mean as though Tom Holland's Spider Man will have a bit more of a prominent part in uh, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, maybe, or you could just like completely ignore him and just have this different version of um, Spider-Man, and then you could maybe have a flash of um, Hugh Jackman's Logan or something in there. Yeah, that'd be um, cool. Or, uh, to be honest, the best one to do would probably be do Deadpool. Yeah. Because Deadpool's already referenced the multiverse within the X-Men films anyway. Mm. Have like a super quick Deadpool cameo, because that'll like, he he will probably already be re- like referencing the multiverse and shit like that because he did that at the end of his film anyway. Mm-hmm. At the end of Deadpool two, he went exploring the multiverse and he even like stopped Ryan Reynolds from being in Green Lantern and shit. Yeah. Oh so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes that. sense. Yeah. Like he's already done something like that. So even just like a thirty second, just there, like they're traveling through loads of multiverses and like Deadpool sort of steps out into like. I don't know, like a worm tunnel between multiverses or something like that. Deadpool sort of steps out. He's like, "Oh, this is how we do this type Wouldn't thing." Wouldn't it be amazing? He yeah. just sneaks into the main MCU. Well, he just like sneaks between portals into the main MCU. That, that, <laughs> or that sequence in Deadpool combines with a sequence in Multiverse of Madness, and they're going yeah. through the multiverse, and then they find Deadpool going through that and doing that, and then that's how it pulls him in. That idea, yeah, mm. yeah. There's a, there's a, look, it's called Multiverse of Madness, so it is going to be... You've got to have some madness. Yeah, you're going to have some <laughs> madness. You're going to have some multiverse. You're going to have all sorts. Uh, next story is we got a first look at Netflix's Sherlock Holmes, which is uh, starring Henry Cavill, Holmes. Millie, Bobby Brown, and You really Sam. put the L in Holmes, then. Holmes. 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 Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Holmes. Sherlock Holmes <laughs> under the hammer. <laughs> Sherlock. Holmes in the sun. Sherlock and key. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Right, yeah, uh, we got a first look at this. I didn't know Henry Cavill was going to be playing Sherlock Holmes at all, um, but it looks okay. really cool. So I feel like we're brushing the real story underneath the rug here. So this is Millie Bobby Brown's film. This is based around uh, Enola Holmes. Um, it's based off a series of young adult novels by the author Stalling for Time. Um, um, Nancy Springer. Nancy Springer. Um, she did. Uh, she, she did a series of young adult novels based around Sherlock's younger sister, who is being played by Millie Bobby Brown. But then the titular Sherlock is being played by Henry Cavill, and their brother. Uh, Mycroft is going to be played by Sam Cleflin. Is his name? They actually look really alike in this. They like in the facing yeah. and the faces that they've. Um, it's yeah. it's the brow and the nose. Yeah, yeah. It it, it looks really good. I think it, I think this is going to be really good. And Netflix are killing it. Netflix are doing really well. Henry yeah. Cavill's got a good relationship with them with The Witcher. Yeah, toss a coin to Sherlock Holmes and get it on my screen. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty fun. This. Yeah. Uh, we will hopefully maybe get a trailer soon for it. 
Uh, at the moment, it's just set photos from the Total Film magazine. It feels like it probably should have a trailer soon, like from the looks and yeah, stuff that we got. Naila, no, uh, Naila. Netflix. Naila is a friend, uh, by the way. We're, we're not cutting any of this out because this is. Uh, we're not cutting it out. No, okay. Not, I don't know why I said Naila. I went to say Netflix. I just said Naila. Hi, Naila, if you're listening. <laughs> So Netflix, like they tend to like announce stuff and then they'll drop a trailer pretty recent, uh, like soon after that, and then the release date will be like a month after that or something like that. Yeah. So I reckon this might drop sort of in the autumn time, maybe. Mm-hmm. And you were saying it's so gonna we might have... get a trailer. Yeah, and you were saying it's gonna have like talk into the camera. Th- fourth wall stuff. Well, we think so because one of the screenshots is literally like. Uh, uh, what's her name? Eleanor, is it? Enola. Enola. Millie Bobby sorry. Brown. Um, yeah, Millie Bobby Brown's character. She's like in an office with an older gentleman. They're like looking through paperwork and stuff like that, and she's literally like looking over her shoulder, talk like staring directly down the camera, just sort of like chatting away to the camera. Yeah. So I reckon it might be that. If not, it's just a an interesting shot that they decided to take of it. Like they took a screenshot where she looked over her shoulder and it just so happened to be that like they just chose the screen grab from where she was looking directly into the camera. What um, Sherlock Holmes do you prefer between the Benedict Cumberbatch one, like the BBC one and the Robert Downey Jr. one? Have you seen them both? Um, I I like them both. They're very, very different for me aesthetically. Probably the Robert Downey Jr. Guy Ritchie ones because mm-hmm. I preferred Sherlock to be in his sort of time period. That's when I always think the character works best. Yeah, I do like different imagine like different variations of it and stuff like that. Well, I think p- Michael Caine played him at one point as well. Mm. I think the plot one of the um, UK version's really good. There's oh like yeah, the, the show really is fantastic. And it's great having three seasons to like explore the characters and explore loads of different storylines. And Martin Freeman's um, really good in it. Yeah, and we are getting a third film as well, so... Mm. Uh, I don't know if production has stopped for that or what. But Who knows? What's, anyway, what's next, the next story? story on the list? Next story, we will cut to um, Margot Robbie is in the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot? Yeah. I'm going to say reboot? <laughs> Question marks. <laughs> so apparently there's, t- <laughs> un- uh-huh. there's two versions of this film like in production at the moment, like in script writing. There's apparently two different versions of this, but uh, Margot Robbie is said to lead the new Pirates of the Caribbean film, and they are saying it's a reboot, but I think it's a soft reboot, to be honest. Disney don't like to reboot stuff. They like to leave things open for a return of familiar characters or they do like picking it up years later type thing. Yeah. So you can have callbacks to the originals and stuff. I don't think they want to cut the potential of the star power of, say, like, I know we lost Jeffrey Rush in the last one, but like he's never really dead. He dies in like all of them. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey Rush, um, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, clearly, they don't want to close the door on that character forever. No. Although they might want to sideline him a bit at the moment because he has been diminishing in every film. Mm. Uh, you don't want to get rid of the likes of Orlando Bloom coming back, Kira Knightley, or them sorts of people. Hmm. Yeah, I. Um. It, it's tough because where do you where do you go with Pirates of the Caribbean? Because we've got that many different stories already between them. You know, Dead Man's Chest with Davy Jones, and then you add, um, mm-hmm. Christ, is it called Salazar's Revenge, or is it... Um, uh, Dead Man Tells No Tales, but in the UK it's called Salazar's Revenge. That's it. That's the fifth one. Yeah. You add, you know. uh, what was the fourth one on Stranger Tides? Yeah, At World's End, Curse of the Black Yeah, Pearl. At World's End was a two-parter with Dead Man's Chest. Yeah. The, th- the original trilogy is great. Yeah, and I, yeah, I recently rewatched the first one. The first one's a fantastic film. Mm-hmm. It just is. <laughs> yeah, it's really good, and it's like, like I we're itching for a new pirate film as well. When was the last time we had a pirate film that wasn't Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> yeah, I mean everyone's just uh, freaking out over that. What's that video game? That pirate video game that everyone's um, Sea of Thieves. Yeah, everyone's just one. freaking out over Sea of Thieves. 
at the minute. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like Margot what, Robbie's a great choice for it. Yeah. And do you call it Pirates of the Caribbean? Like, do you go yeah. with that as you know? Are you not going to alienate people? I guess the last one no. was a bit different anyway. But you know, I mean, yeah, the last one focused more on the younger characters, the guy that plays Nightwing now, and the the girl who played Effie in Skins. What's her name? I can't remember. Mm, can't remember. Her name's left me. No, but, but it's yeah. it's an interesting one. Like Margot Robbie can obviously carry a film, no doubt mm-hmm. about that. Um, but it's like I don't know. Ooh. I don't know whether the Pirates films are kind of like one and done now for me. I don't know whether I'd want to. It, they have a formula, you know what I mean, and I kind of I can kind of see where it's going. Like visually, they look amazing, but it's like that's where why do you I go? think if they do like a soft reboot, they like separate it from the old ones. Although I did just come up with an idea myself. One of the most interesting characters from the original trilogy that we didn't get really much time with was Zoe Saldana's character. Okay. And she was set up as a captain as well, so maybe we get sort of like Margot Robbie and Zoe Saldana on the high seas together. Maybe, maybe they, bring in a bit of girl power, you know what I mean. Maybe they move away from the Caribbean and maybe go to the Pacific. Maybe Pirates, uh, of, the Pirates of the Pacific or Pirates yeah, yeah. of the Mediterranean. Because then you could get into like, uh, like the Asian... Um, Piracy rings and the Asian seas and stuff like that, which they did a bit in the third one. Pirates of Obviously, the they went to Indian Ocean. <laughs> yep, yep, something like that. No, they would have to stick with Pirates of the Caribbean because it's the established brand. Mm. Like, like that's what's going to get bums in seats for the people who don't watch every trailer, don't keep up to date with everything like that. They'll see, oh, there's a new Pirates of the Caribbean film. I'll go see it. Yeah, sure. It's the same way as like. Transformers, like Bumblebee, didn't do quite as well, and I think that was because it didn't have Transformers in the name. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. But have you seen Bumblebee? Bumblebee is the best Transformers film that we've had. Yeah, it's action. pretty good. It's actually a pretty good film. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. Speaking, I, of... I like Haley Seinfeld. I think she's a great actress. So that's a mm. good film. I was about to say speaking of, but this next story is nothing related to, uh, to the <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean reboot. But we got a first look at Jamie Foxx um, getting ready for the Mike Tyson biopic, which looks pretty cool. Mm. Pretty good casting for it. Like the photo that I've seen, um, he he I looks like he's going to be able yet. to Let's do it. Yeah, he's uh, like uh, shaved his head. He's not got the eye tattoo on, obviously, but it's uh, a <laughs> Mike Tyson. This is pre-tattoo his... Mike Tyson. Yeah. Mike Tyson's a really interesting a really interesting uh, guy. Like, if you've ever gone and listened to him on the Joe Rogan podcast, um, he talks a lot about the struggles and stuff that he went through mentally. Um, obviously, I think he went to he got in a lot of trouble, didn't he? I can't really remember the specifics of Mike Tyson's past, but I know right. he's infamous for something. Yeah, he's been in lots of trouble for lots of different things. Yeah, <laughs> and it talks about that, and it talks about how he. Oh, didn't he nearly like? Didn't he pretty much kill somebody? Or nearly kill somebody in the ring. I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Mike Tyson fans <laughs> I, or boxing fans. I, I don't want to say yes or no. To be honest, uh, when you started saying that, I thought you were getting him mixed up with somebody else. And I was like, oh, was that mine? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty. I think this is going to be quite an interesting biopic. Amy Fox is getting swole. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and also, biopics are just like a thing right now. Like, musical biopics are huge. We've had like yeah. Rocket Man, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, you know, like stuff like that. I know, obviously, Mike Tyson's not a musician, but you know, things like the biopics are pretty popular, and they yeah. tend to be pretty it, well received. My issue with biopics are they're always really formulaic, especially the music ones. Mm. Like it's uh, there's a great video from Patrick uh, Patrick H. Willems on YouTube about musical biopics and about um, was it Dewey something or other. Uh, oh, it's got John C. Riley. It's a Mick take one. It's yeah. His take. And it just follows the formula exactly, but it's like the best biopic that's not a real biopic. Have you seen the <laughs> Steve Jobs biopic with uh, no, Michael Fassbender? Not yet. not yet. That's that's a pretty good film. Um from what I from what I've heard about people talking about it when it came out, that it was a little bit um there were parts of it that weren't very accurate about yeah. Steve's actual personality and stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, could be wrong. I don't know Steve yeah, Jobs personally, obviously. but it, That's what I heard. Like, apparently it was, like, sort of 
the film was written about what was told in headlines type thing. Yeah, versus actually um, how, like, first-hand accounts, I suppose. Of, yeah. But it was directed by Danny Boyle. It did really well, and it's a pretty... Mm-hmm pretty good biopic um yeah. next little bit of news that we got because we've uh, got an absolute boatload of it we're only about halfway through it um mm-hmm. news just in chris breaking news from two days stop, ago when you're listening stop to the this papers <laughs> change the headlines <laughs> breaking news as of two days ago um fallout the video game is confirmed for an amazon prime vi- video series uh, from Kill to Films, Bethesda, who are the games developer behind Fallout, um, posted this um, on what would be Thursday last week. Which is pretty much. You want to know? You want to know how like like stressed out I've been and like how absent I've been from the world in the last week. I didn't fucking hear this. I'm all over Twitter. I'm all over shit like this. I always hear stuff about Fallout because I love the Fallout games. I love the Elder Scroll games. But I didn't hear a thing about it. You can let yourself know off, any- mate. I only saw this like five minutes before we started recording the podcast and added, <laughs> it, added it in here, so don't worry about it. But it's big but news. Why, was this not, news. why is this not bigger news on the internet? <laughs> so I'm not seeing it anywhere. Where do we where do we go with a Fallout TV series? Because you historically, apart from in Fallout 4, you play the silent protagonist and it's a choice of what you do. Like you obviously yeah. decide whether your character is going to be evil, good, in the middle, an absolute lunatic, a mysterious stranger, blah 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 blah. And it's like, where do you go? So, I mean, let's speculate for a sec for any of those Fallout fans out there. Maybe it'll follow like one of the factions, like say like the Brotherhood of Steel or something. That'd be pretty cool. Um, or maybe okay, so it's like two a different ideas film, in my head, like the Road or something, maybe. Right, so th- th- that was one of my things. It was like, you could have like a brand new, like obviously it's going to be a brand new character because it's a sandbox, you make your own character, but like have like, you establish a new character and they are just like wandering through the wasteland. Maybe you have it um, either near the beginning of when the vaults start opening um, so that like you see the world get established and stuff like that, or you have it sort of like, fallout 4 style which is like uh uh, fallout 4 or fallout 3 like years down the line type thing and i reckon for like one season you stick in one sort of environment so you stick in like washington or boston or something like that i think that would be like one good way to do it or you can maybe do like an anthology series maybe so like have a season where you said like you follow the brotherhood of steel then you follow the uh the underground railroad Mm. uh, or something like that you could even then have like a horror ish series where like um it's all about like the ghouls and the proper like mutated people in it and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like a survival horror type thing. Be pretty cool. It's quite interesting. There's, I, I, there's I mean, so many things to explore. I mean, don't forget we're still getting the Lord of the Rings series from Amazon Prime as well, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we I don't got... know. It's tricky to sort of predict what they'll do with it. I think an anthology series might be a bit too out there for them. Yeah, I don't think... I think you never know who will come back for the next one. Yeah, I think for testing the waters of it, I don't think that they'd go for something as kind of sparse and, you know, yeah. changing as that, but maybe just something a little bit grounded. Maybe, yeah. like... I think maybe more following, like, your protagonist and... What? Maybe they set up, like, a small group, sort of, like, Walking Dead style almost. Yeah, I mean, it would probably wouldn't be too dissimilar to The Walking Dead, really. Yeah. But, so yeah. You, you could have, like, a small community, like... Um, I can't remember what the main city in Fallout 4 is called, the one inside of the stadium. Um, uh, you could have, like, that community, and, like, you start off, and it's already established, and they've built this, like, little town inside of the stadium and everything like Do that. Do they blow up Megaton or not? <laughs> <laughs> a choose your own adventure series sam oh no it's the follow-up to bandersnatch oh it's amazon's take on bandersnatch oh what would you think of that i mean imagine um, i mean you'd only have like two you may options. as well just play a fallout game at that point yep that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was such a cool idea when i thought of it and then i was like nah who would you cast in a role like that who would you have as oh. your your lead all I can think is 
Viggo Mortensen in the road now. Yeah, but, I'm the um, same. Yeah. No, I'm thinking maybe like not Ethan Hawke. Who's the guy that reminds me of Ethan Hawke? And I always get them fucking mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what was his name? He's in the Conjuring films. Uh... Uh, I'm loading it up now. Ethan, Patrick Wilson. Ethan Hawke. Patrick Hawk. Wilson would be pretty cool. I don't know why, but Ethan Hawke really reminds me of uh, Kevin Bacon for some reason. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like maybe like a Patrick Wilson type. Interesting. Well, mm. as news develops, we'll find <gasps> out. Jason Momoa. <laughs> He's already in Dune. Goodness me. <laughs> Okay, right, right. Okay, I've got Jason Momoa story for you real quick. Okay. Right? This was the one I was going to drop on you super quick. So speaking of Jason Momoa, he's apparently just been cast as Frosty the Snowman. What? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if it's going to be an animated film or he's just putting his voice to a CG character or what, but apparently he's been cast as Frosty the Snowman. No, he's not. (laughs) <laughs> I saw it. It's it's on news outlets out there. A what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Jason Momoa, Frosty the Snowman. It's there if you Google it. To voice Frosty the Snowman in live action picture for Warner Brothers. I really don't I, know how I feel about that. Um. Um. So it looks like it's going to be. Um, a live action version of the classic like 80s, 90s cartoon version that they show on TV every Christmas. Yeah, it's meant to be like a, isn't it like a, a hybrid CGI live action film from what yeah. I've just seen? Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. No good. <laughs> no good. <laughs> Jason Momoa is Frosty the Snowman. What will we see next? In the bin. <laughs> In the bid it goes. <laughs> uh, next story, uh, we'll go with... Uh, we're, we're running out of stories now, and then we'll get onto the trailers for the week. But uh, the main couple of bits and bobs we wanted to talk about, really, is um, we got a first look at The Boys Season 2, which is absolutely action-packed, I'd say. Yep. Um, I'm really excited for this. I really, really, really liked The Boys Season 1. I really liked Season 1. We haven't discussed this on the podcast yet, but we really enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's really good. Like, it's really violent. Like, really violent, if you've not seen it. They're not even shying away from it in the footage that they've shown. So, there was trailers come out, and we've got, like, the first three minutes of the season, and we've also got a small scene as well, which is the introduction of Stormfront. Yeah, so you got a lot of a big look at Black Noir and Stormfront. Yeah. They're, they're like the main two uh, oh, characters that are coming okay. to light, I suppose, for the new uh, for the new season. But yeah, oh, yeah. Man. So I think season two is going to focus a lot on the Black Noir storyline from the comic books. Okay, um, I'm not going to spoil it in case nobody knows what that storyline is, but it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's where they're sort of going with that, and they're also pushing a lot more following up from the plot line of season one of Soups being introduced into the US military. Yeah, um, yeah. So we see Black Noir taking down a terrorist superhero, mm-hmm. and that scene that we get is absolutely gruesome as fuck. I love it. Yeah, the, <laughs> how he like puts his hands in his jaw and like put, but you actually see it. <laughs> That's that's the thing with that's the thing with the boys, isn't it? It's like yeah. bits where the camera would cut away. I mean, superheroes just don't do this anyway, right? From what we know of them, and Soup's if they were the gonna, boys, I know. And if they were going to do this, the camera would definitely look away, but it doesn't. You see everything yeah but to be fair like if superman in the dc universe was to just punch a pedestrian in the face his hand <laughs> would probably go through the head yeah his- well it's like it's like like i think the first bit of gore that we got in season one was like right near the beginning when uh huey's girlfriend gets ran through doesn't she by yeah. a train yeah and like, like it's literally just slow motion blood like a skin's just evaporated like a rib cage is just flying in the air and stuff it's like holy fucking shit and that just set the tone for where the story was going that's it it's like from that point it's like i'm in 
it's yeah i like how the trailer didn't and we won't talk too much about the boys season one where like plot wise in case people haven't listened uh, haven't listened haven't watched it already but i really like how the trailer didn't address too much about where we got left off with yeah, the boys season one obviously you see that um evil soup introduced but i like how it addresses that and not the cliffhanger that we get at the end yeah so, so yeah. do you know anything about Stormfront? Uh, I I didn't this. even know this was based on a comic series, to be completely honest with you. I thought it was just a Amazon original, like a total original. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. So, it, interesting thing then, if you didn't know, it was based off a comic book. So it's based off a, com- a Image Comics comic book, I believe it was. Okay. Um, the lead character, Huey, in the comic books was actually drawn to resemble Simon Pegg. Okay. And they've been trying to get like this in the works for ages either as a series or as a film there was a film script going around several years ago um sort of like just after hot fuzz sort of time yeah uh, I, th- uh, I think or just after that and simon Pegg was in talks to play huey because that's who the character was meant to look like anyway so he's since aged out the role but that's why he plays huey's dad in the series i was gonna say yeah he's the dad isn't he that's really cool yeah and um, but the, and the character like the the characters in this just generally while we're talking about Simon Pegg like they're all really fleshed out and really good and mm-hmm. like the ones that you don't see much of in season one like Black Noir looks like they just took a back seat and that they'll be getting a big focus in this one and I think the reason why he took a back seat in season one is because of where his story could go in season two. Very good. I think that's going to play very much into it. Yeah, Stormfront's an interesting character because she's, in the comic books, is actually a male character okay. um, based off a Nazi uh, superhero experiment. I think she's like, um, like she got like superpowers from like an old Nazi experiment. So she might be kind of like an alt-right type, like secret Nazi type <laughs> character. <laughs> Wow. So that's why you see, like, when she sees, like, um, Homelander, obviously he's quite Aryan, isn't he? Like, bleach blonde hair, really blue eyes. She, like, she's like, wow, your eyes really are blue type thing. And, like, she's, like, obsessed with the Aryan race type thing. So wow. I don't know if they're going to go in that direction. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me because this is li- this, sees, this yeah. series has, like, no filter to it. It's like how so, it addresses the female soups is really quite important ooh. in this because. Yeah. They are just absolutely just yeah. They're they're made as like eye candy for people, aren't they? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. we won't talk too much about it. Go check out Ugh. the boys. It is a really, 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 really good TV series. Like I don't um, think there's a single downtime in that that show. It's really good. Uh, do we have the release date? We do, don't we? I'm googling it. I don't know if you remember it off the top of your uh, head. No, but while you're checking for it in this trailer, we also got a look at Giancarlo Esposito from uh, you know him as um, Gustavo Fring in the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul series. Um, yeah. He looks like he's like the chairman of it all. Um, but yeah, so I think we got a flash of him last season, didn't we? At the big party thing that they were having. Yeah, but he's been killing it, man. He's been doing really well. Like uh, he did Better Call Saul. He came back for the to the Breaking Bad universe to do Better Call Saul, and yeah. he was also in. I don't know whether he was the Mandalorian. in. Um, yeah, he was obviously in the Mandalorian. I can't remember whether he was in um, El Camino or not. But yeah, no man, he's, mm, he's no, just because he, he was long dead by that point. No, yeah, I didn't know, but yeah, but there's flashbacks in El Camino. I just don't know whether he yeah, was but in it flashes back to after he was dead. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> someone paid attention during that episode. <laughs> uh, okay, so September fourth, the boys season two is going to start airing, and I believe um, we're getting. I think it's three episodes, and then it's going weekly. Okay, that's I, I, I quite like the idea of that because for people that maybe I don't know for those absolute freaks out there that jump into a second season of something, I suppose you could you could watch those three episodes and know whether it's going to be for you or not. Yeah, before um, you commit to like three weeks. I'm not seeing anything major on that, but I think I remember hearing that on a YouTube video about it. Yeah, uh, um, we have got the names of all the episodes. Okay. Uh, well, we won't tell them. We won't uh, go through no. them because of spoilers for people. People. To be like honest, to go in it's back. not really giving much away, but it just also doesn't make much sense. The name of them, so no. <laughs> you well, know. There you go. 
It's like how we got all the episode names for Mandalorian. Do you remember that? Yeah, but we could speculate like shit about them. Whereas <laughs> this, like, we don't know much about it. Like, I don't know if these are names of like uh, issues from the comic book or what. So I don't mm, know. Interesting. Anyway, 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 anyway. The next big story we've got this week. So this is like the big, big one. But it was actually from last week. But because we were focusing on our DCU uh, retro, uh, we didn't cover it. But it is related to the DCU because... We did drop a little hint, didn't we? We did drop a little hint. And we did actually say on that episode that we were going to talk about it this week instead. But... Here you go. Michael Keaton is in talks, confirmed... Um, I think it's just in talks. Uh, I don't think it's yeah. fully confirmed yet. I think it's, I think it's like, oh, he's in final discussions type thing. Even though we don't know if he's even in first discussions or what. So he is in a discussion to join the DCEU in the Flash movie. Flashpoint. Flashpoint. Well, we yeah we yeah it's Flashpoint, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about this so we're really let's unpack this right we're, we're a bit late to the party on this so i've already listened to a couple of uh news outlets and other people podcasts chat about this and their thoughts on it and the rumor is that he's meant to take like more of a nick fury-esque role now in the dcu i think that's bollocks <laughs> i don't think it'd work i think the, if anyone really the flash should do that because yeah, it also just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I think it's just going to be one of those things where they visit his timeline, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe I he think... becomes like a, maybe he becomes more like a tutor or a like a like a mentor to another character. I May- don't know. Well, that's what I was about to say. I think we might see him in like a flash, like whenever like Barry's doing like weird time travel shenanigans or multiverse shenanigans, but. I think the only other time we'll majorly see him is if we get like a version of Batman Beyond with him as the older Bruce Wayne, which mm. loads of people say all the times. So people have always asked for this and stuff. And it does make the most sense. I think that would be the only time we would get loads of Michael Keaton and Batman. Because also Flashpoint, it doesn't make sense that he's like the main Batman in it. No, it doesn't. Because no. that would be Jeffrey Dean Morgan playing Thomas Wayne. Which they set up, they they hired Jeffrey D. Morgan and Lauren, uh, Lauren Cohen to play Bruce and Martha Wayne. Yeah, and for, you don't because get... they already had the prediction of Flashpoint. Yeah, and you don't get big actors like Jeffrey D. Morgan and stuff to play Batman's dad just for a flashback. Yeah, it's like for a uh, for a silent. 30 second slow mo. Sorry for the yeah. intro with the credits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just don't. And he he's got he is an amazing actor, man. I know The Walking mm-hmm. Dead's kind of fell off, but those first few episodes where he came in as Negan and oh, like oh. even up to where I last saw, which was sort of like the end of the main like Negan arc for that they set up type thing. Like he was phenomenal. Like he never broke as that character. He didn't have a bad episode. Yeah. He was just flawless. Like he's such a good Negan. Yeah, and I, I really like everything he's in. I think he, I really liked him in Rampage, even though he was just playing Negan in Rampage as well. But <laughs> he's generally, just a he's good really actor. good. Yeah, he's really good. And little pig, little pig. But he could Let play such me a in. <laughs> But he could play such a good evil Batman. Mm. He just could. Yeah. Well, he doesn't even need to be a evil Batman. He's just. He's just a darker version of Batman. Like, yeah, he uses a yeah. gun. Like he's still a good guy. He's just damaged. So he's essentially a Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> he's he's darker than the Ben Affleck one. Yeah, yeah. He uses a gun and he means to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> he not... doesn't. Oh, whoops! Accidentally killed him by crashing a fucking boat on the head. <laughs> He'd stop if the mum's name was Martha, though. <laughs> 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 but well, I, Negan I wouldn't. I... The Negan Batman wouldn't. He he just keep going. <laughs> he, just... He, he would stop though if the Joker was Martha. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> guys! Read Flashpoint. It's a fucking great yeah. story. So but we've the... talked about this a few times. Like we're in a position now where we could get a Flashpoint that works because we care about the characters in it now. The only like... thing that I've I've heard talk about is that the problem with doing the Flashpoint film is a lot of people know what's going to happen like it's all it's been done 
It's been done on the Flash TV series. It, had... it was not done on the Flash well, TV series. Was... I dispute that. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't done in like Ultimate Flashpoint. It wasn't like Atlantean. It wasn't done in any sense of no, fucking Flashpoint. <laughs> it, no, but it was like the Flash. It focused on him and his mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. It had that yeah. bit there. But with with this, it's like we've seen that pretty good DCU animated film, Flashpoint. It's been covered in the comic books. So do you reckon maybe they take a Marvel approach where it's not exactly what happens and maybe it's a bit different? Or do you reckon... I think, I think they would obviously have to like change it a bit so it's not exactly the same. I reckon the best thing to do might be, so you're not bloating it too much, maybe get rid of a lot of like the reverse flash stuff well i mean so if it's so a flash movie make the, make the villain either aquaman or wonder woman ah uh, because of the whole atlantean wonder woman uh, yeah. atlantean amazonian war well i think wonder woman would be the better villain yeah it's like like you could still have barry go back to try and solve the like murder of his mum maybe not have like um reverse flash as the overarching villain of the entire film maybe just like he goes back and like he saves his mum but he doesn't figure out who was trying to kill her Mm. but it is also a really good opportunity to bring reverse flash in yeah it would be but maybe set him up for like a different film Mm. because like reverse flash and flash have had so many good stories together yeah like they don't just have to do flashpoint like Mm. maybe just have it like Barry's trying to come to terms with the fact that he'll have to and like make it more about the emotional bit of like, he has to let his mum die type thing to save the world instead of he has to beat reverse flash. Yeah. It's I just don't know. I don't know. I, I does... would like to see a pure adaptation, but at the same time, like like you said, people know what's gonna happen. I mean it's got a yeah, because I mean it's like where does where does the My- Michael Keaton batman come in because surely he doesn't would... this is why i'm like yeah which... it just has to be a small cameo like i say if it, if it was his dad if it was um thomas wayne batman you would have jeffrey d morgan but maybe mm-hmm. just because at this point anything's possible because you've not got ben affleck batman anymore maybe they recast the whole entire batman side of stuff maybe michael keaton is thomas wayne yeah maybe but, but they have said that he's coming back as his version of Batman. Ah, uh, okay. That's what they've been saying. He's coming back as Bruce Wayne. What if What if we start off, and it's not in the current DCU, what if it starts off that we're seeing that version of the world and of that Flash, and that Flash gets mixed up with the Flash that we've got right now? Elseworlds. Yeah, and maybe yeah. it's that Flash gets involved with Multiverse. it. Multiverse! Where it's not... Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Like, I, the whole Flashpoint arc, like, is one of those things that I kind of get a bit lost with after a while, after I've not, like, watched it or anything or <laughs> read it. But, yeah, I think... Do you... I, it's the same thing. I'd love to see the whole marvel of the, the Atlanteans versus the Amazons and you know yeah i just love to see that because it'd be brutal imagine seeing jason momoa's aquaman one off against um gal gadot but yeah. like evil gal gadot like isn't she's pretty badass in flashpoint isn't she Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah but she is doesn't she like straight up brutally villain. murder an atlantean oh i was about to say yeah she beheads mira in front of that's it yeah aquaman <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Gal Gadot beheading Amber Heard in front of Jason <laughs> Literally, okay so we had this discussion ages ago I remember having this discussion with you I can't remember which DCU film we had just got out of I think it was Batman vs Superman maybe Yeah. Um, and we were driving home and like so we found out that Flashpoint was happening that was going to be the first Flash film and it was going to release like really short after uh, Justice League I think was the original plan. Yeah. And at this point, we hadn't had Wonder Woman or anything like that. And I said to you, I said, the reason Flashpoint works is because, like, we're established with these characters and we care about these characters, which means when we see a different version of them, we're more invested and we want things to, like, we're more invested, like, we know how a character should be, so seeing this different version, like, you've got the established version, so the change 
in the status quo is what keeps you interested in it. Yeah. Whereas for most people, they haven't read a Wonder Woman comic book. They haven't seen an animated show or anything like that with Wonder Woman in. They didn't care about Wonder Woman until we got the Wonder Woman film. Mm -hmm. So they weren't established. So the whole point of Flashpoint is that you get these different versions of the characters because you like that version of the character. So seeing a different version of the same character like is interesting and it has more of an like a weight to it and they don't need to over like don't need to overdo anything because you already have an established knowledge of the characters where we didn't have that with the films so now that we have got that version of the characters like we will have had what four films with wonder woman by this point yeah you're more invested in her character so seeing a different version of her would be more compelling for people interesting That's a very long-winded way of getting to that point yeah <laughs> But like what I'm saying is we're now in a place where we could have Flashpoint and have it work. I would still prefer Flash's first outing to just be the Flash. Yeah, I agree. But Flashpoint, because we love Aquaman and Wonder Woman, like I feel like they would take the shine off the Flash because the Flash is sort of a secondary character throughout most of Flashpoint. Mm. Like he's sort of like a passive protagonist, like everything's happening to him or around him. Yeah. Like yeah, he changes, like he sets it. the actions in motion, but then like the whole thing with like Thomas Wayne and Batman, like trying to re-establish like the multiverse and all the electric shit, mm. and then you've got the war between the Atlanteans and all that sort of stuff. Like, like that's that's like the main plot points of that, and the Flash is just like in the middle of it all the time. Well, interestingly enough, while we're talking about Michael Keaton's Batman, um. He is actually in concept art as Earth-99 Batman in the Crisis on Infinite Earths concept art. He's actually got the, um, you know, the suit, not the bat suit. Earth is Earth-99? Um, it's the one where um, it's like old man Bruce Wayne. and he's... Is it the kingdom come where he's got like the neck brace and everything? Yeah, 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 that's it. So he's actually there's concept art of Michael Keaton as that Batman as that Bruce. Yeah, Wayne. that was that was for the TV show, wasn't it? So we got Brandon Ralph coming back as Superman, but it was the Kingdom Come oh. Superman. So they were like as they were doing the whole multiverse thing and getting people from the different shows, and like they got like Tom Welling Superman and like um, what a what was his name? <laughs> name Dean Kane was it the Superman from the nineties from no, Lois and Superman. Lois and Clark, sorry. Mm. Like they wanted to try and get Michael Keaton back for it, and they were thinking about doing the Kingdom Come Batman. What if it um, crosses paths again with the um, the Flash from the TV series? They could definitely do it. Like when he's running through the Speed Force. Yeah. Like this is where you get glimpses into. It's the same with the Multiverse Madness for Doctor Strange. Like I was saying, like you can have all these glimpses into the different worlds and stuff. Obviously. The Multiverse of Madness has more room for it to cross over because you could have, like, in that you could have, like, a fractured plane. So you're fighting in a version of New York, which is eight different versions of New York all mashed together. Yeah. Whereas in this, because you just go into a different timeline and that creates the multiverse, essentially. Like, mm. you don't really have as much room for crossover like that, but you have enough room for cameos running through the Speed Force. Yeah. Because cool. you get that in the show anyway. When he's running through it, like you see different elements of the timeline and different multiverses and stuff like that. So it makes sense to do that in this as well. If we were to get a reverse Flash, who would you want to see as him? Uh, reverse Flash? Yeah. Um, I had a really good casting a while ago and I can't remember who. Um, It's a shame because the guy who plays him in the TV series is a really good reverse Flash. Tom Kavanagh. Yeah. Yeah, he is a really good Flash, but I don't think he would... I don't think he's big enough for the film no, version. No, I think no. he's great for the TV show version. He's great opposite Grant Gustin. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Mm. I, I can't even think. You want someone who's just like... They are menacing looking. Like, they look like a villain, like... Reddit like, says you, Kevin Bacon. Mm, you know what? As an actor, yeah, but I couldn't see him in the mask. I couldn't see him in a bright yellow costume. You know what, though? Maybe. Actually, to tie this into the one of the next stories coming up as well, because I've literally just seen him on here, and he is a pretty damn good actor, maybe Matthew Goode. 
So he, I'll send you a link to who he is now. He was in. He's oh in no, the upcoming, I know who he is. Yeah, uh, he's in the upcoming The Kingsman. He was in The Crown. He played um, the man that Princess Margaret ends up getting with the yeah, photographer. Yeah, he's got um, he's got what a look else of has it. he been in? He's got a look of Reverse Flash. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I saw him. I was like. I really sorry yeah. just to interrupt. I'm really sorry for everyone that can hear banging in the background. The kitchen is still being built. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't hear anything, so hopefully nobody else. Can. Okay, yeah, yeah. This, this Abbey, would be a pretty the good game. This would be, He's a good actor. Yeah, I think you need someone sort of like tall and thin. You need somebody who's like, like Barry Allen, only older. Yeah. Well, he did play. Um, Ozymandias in um, Watchmen, yes, didn't he? Yes, yes, that's the other one that I was trying to think of. Yeah, he played Ozymandias in the Watchmen film. Yeah, and you can do that because Jeffrey D. Morgan played um, the comedian, so there you go. Yeah. Patrick go. Wilson played bring... Night Owl. There you go. You want more multiverse stuff? I have some flashes <laughs> to Zack Snyder's uh, Watchmen in there because they're all one universe now in the comic books after, oh, goodness. after what was the storyline called? I can't remember what the storyline oh, was called. Um, uh, it's just happened. Um, Doomsday Clock. That's the one. That's the one. Have you watched the TV series Watchmen yet? Not yet! No, I've had it spoiled for me though. Because it was really difficult to find in the UK. Mm. Um, but it's out there now, so and it actually comes out on Blu-ray this week, I think, in the UK. You know what? I might so take maybe, a I take might a pick it up it and watch yeah. uh, watch it. Apparently, it's fantastic. Yeah, I've heard so. it's meant to be really good. Anyway, that, let us know what you think about. Um, let us know what you think about the casting. Let us know what you think <laughs> about what you want to see from the Flashpoint movie. Um, the last thing we, I want to really chat about before we move on to trailers, which we'll cover off for the week, is. <laughs> But before that is, um, I wanted to chat to you a little bit about The Last of Us Part 2, Chris, really quickly. Okay. Neither of us, well, you own a PlayStation, I don't, and neither of us I have own played a PlayStation the Last of Us 3. Okay. <laughs> well, neither of us have played The Last of Us Part 2. No. But it's meant to be very, very, very controversially good, I would say. People are hyped, but people are a bit miffed at the same time, I believe. But, yeah, it got me thinking about... Uh, video game type movies in general a little bit and it also got me thinking about who would you like to see cast as Ellie and Joel in a Last of Us uh, TV series film because I do believe it is meant to be a thing right? A HBO series is apparently in the works yeah. Yeah so I saw a really really good casting for Joel and obviously a lot of people are all on the the Hugh Jackman train because of uh, Logan and he would be very, 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 very good. But one that I saw that was really interesting was Nicolaj Costa Valdo. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, who is yep. Jamie Lannister in Game of Thrones? He's always kind of been my pick for it because yeah. he is a phenomenal actor. Yeah, and he does look the fucking part. He just is. He just looks the part. Yeah, I think he could really kill it. Yeah. And I mean, Ellie is pretty much like an Ellen Page. That that was yeah. to remember all that controversy when with Last of Us Part One. But yeah. Uh, yeah, wouldn't it be so good? Like who? Like you get him to do it. He's just perfect for it. He would be great. I don't know who I would cast as Ellie nowadays. Are we are we talking? We're doing Last of Us Part One or Last of Us Part Two, or are we well, sort of a, in between? Are we willing to flex the age of Ellie? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I think Millie Bobby Brown would be a good pick because she's yeah, a really good I've actor. I've seen that quite a lot. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown, um, Nicolaj Costa, Valdo. Yeah. Um, let's have a look what people are saying online for the Last of Us fan cast. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh yes, that's the one. Um, oh, what's her name? She was in Booksmart. Um, ah, uh, I'm seeing her face and I can't think what her name is. Uh, Booksmart. Um, is she also with Nicolaj on that photo? <laughs> yes. 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 Um, what is her name? Caitlin Denver. Yeah, she's but, she's pretty much born to play that role by the look of her. Yeah, she's a phenomenal actress as well. I just think maybe she's a little bit too old to play Ellie from the first game. 
Because mm-hmm. Ellie from the first game needs to be a little bit more childish, you know what I mean? Like, she needs to have, like... Like, you need to feel like it's somebody who's learning the ways of the world from Joel and from the world around her. Yeah. And I feel like... um Caitlin Denver, as good of an actress as she is, she might be a little bit too old to play that role right mm-hmm. now. Um, like she seems like a bit too wise to the world. Whenever I've seen her act, I think it's going to be really weird if the Last of Us series does follow Ellie and Joel. I know that's pretty much what everyone is banking on, but like, may do you use that? Because like, let's face it, we we kind of know what happens in the Last of Us Part Two. We're not going to spoil it because it's a big yeah. deal right now. But do you reckon maybe they use this as an opportunity to maybe retcon some of the things from the second game that people aren't happy with? Maybe to kind of give both fans a a, th- a happy ending to it. I guess possibly they could possibly like retcon a bit and like, I like, that's the benefit of like remakes and stuff like that. You can change things but also do they want to pander to the audience but like, also like how do you because you you don't want to just redo you don't just want to redo the video game because the video game is very cinematic anyway yeah and it's the, like my yeah. my thought process is though like the first game was probably about six hours in length to play through it if you do 10 12 parts an hour long like you've got more room to flesh it out so you can still develop the character a lot more yeah um so it's fine to do the same story and just like add a couple subplots into it maybe or like explore more elements and more depth yeah um i suppose i'm I'm seeing someone here saying joel edgerton maybe as um Joel. Joel, which would be a pretty good casting. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> um, I'm also seeing the saying Joel Kinnaman as Joel's brother, but oh, okay, yeah, Joel Kinnaman that. might be a pretty good Joel as well. No, but you could do a really good Tommy. Yeah, you could do a great that, Tommy. That's a pretty good casting. Uh, uh, yeah, Colin we'll Farrell. See. Um, yeah, I mean the thing is, is if it follows the pace of what the game does, the game really, if that was a cinema, if that was a film, it moves at like a breakneck speed. To be fair, yeah, like if you tried to cover off all that travel and stuff. But also, I mean, it's pretty much the road again. I know I've brought that up already, <laughs> but the road is very, very much a Last of Us esque film. Guys, if you haven't seen the road, watch it. Yeah, if definitely. you haven't read the book, the book's apparently even better. Mm. But it's a phenomenal film. Very good, very good. With Aragorn, with Aragorn in it. Virgo Mortensen. Virgo himself. Mortensen. Uh, anyway, yeah, I just wanted to chat about that really quick. Um, there's also a really, really final, quick last story. Um, they've just announced another Warhammer TV series that's going to be happening. Excellent. Because uh, we're already getting one from them. It's talking about games video games, going to board games, going to tabletop games, going to TV series and films. Um, <laughs> going to things, coming to things, coming to things, coming yeah. to things. <laughs> uh, they're already doing a Eisenhorn TV series, which follows like an Inquisitor from that game, um, okay. which is going to be pretty sick because um, it's not like over the top. You could, you know, it doesn't have to just be space marines fighting aliens. It's like a lot more fleshed out in terms of his character. Um, yeah. Bit probably a bit more like a like a bit like a crime thing. It's what Inquisitors are really like, but just really evil. Like you know what I would like to see. Go on. Like if they did it, sort of like the Netflix, um, Marvel stuff. So you got like a series for like all the different armies type things. So you got like uh, an Imperial series. You got a Space Marine series. You got. A Tau and an Eldar series. Yeah, a Tyranid like, series. All fight. Where it's well, just... I, <laughs> well, that's the thing. You couldn't really have much dialogue. So what I was thinking was they could all be fighting like Screaming. different or the same enemies. So maybe you have like the Nids or the Necrons as like the main enemy in like mm. each of the series. And then like you have like a crossover series where it's like a fucking all out war. And you've got like the heroes from like each of the different series that you've just been watching. Like you get the leads teaming up. Yeah. Like 
So you've got like the Imperials and the uh, Space Marines having to start side by side, and then you've got like the Eldar and the Tower having to team up and shit. Yeah, they're 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 about to kill it because they're releasing a animated series, animated film, or is it a TV series? I believe that's already pretty much nearly done. Um, they they released the soundtrack for last week, and that's meant to be full on um Space Marines. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. And then they're but doing. I think they're always going to do Space Marines first because that's people's entryway into the 40k universe. The poster child, isn't it? Guys, we're fucking nerds. We are real nerds. <laughs> but the main thing is, is that they're doing another animated series, which is cool. But these, yeah. they, they're going to kill it because you got to, you got to think they're already such a big community online that once you then put them into the mainstream, where you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to go and get the tabletop game. But you, mm-hmm. you know, people just played the video games. That's what got me into it. I just played the video games. Yeah, and they were really you don't, good. You don't need to be like a massive nerd. Like people watched The Witcher who have never read a Witcher book or never played The Witcher video games. People saw like a new fantasy series come out and they watched it. Like yep. so, it would be a great way. Like there's a gap in the market for some cool gritty sci-fi at the moment. Definitely. So yeah. Fuck yeah! Like like especially if you do sort of like a, a Space Marines versus like tyranids with like the gene stealers and stuff yeah you could do like a really small dark fucking you could do it like a a straight to digital film and it's like a horror film uh, it would yeah. be um space hulk wouldn't it it would be like the space yeah hulk yeah yeah board, space a board hulk. game slash video game yeah and you could have like a proper like little horror thing like that it's just a sci-fi horror in the vein of aliens the one problem i feel that they have is that i reckon maybe <sighs> games workshop have too much of a too much like of control over it like yeah. they won't if you have a director that i don't know if you like let's say you brought someone like uh edgar wright edgar, edgar wright i'm just thinking edgar wright would make a great film <laughs> well let's just say you brought someone like james gunn in to do yeah. to do it right he's had he's done like horror films and he's done you know guardians and he's doing suicide squad and he's got you know he's got action films down and he's got that horror element down as well Say you brought someone like him on, like I don't feel like he would be given a lot of control. It would be very much this is what you need to create because this is our baby and we don't want it to, you know, we want. This. See, uh, I get what you I get what you mean, but I think you chose a bad example. Like you're not hiring James Gunn if you're not going to give him control. Yeah, I know, but like, that's 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 yeah, yeah. You, yeah you pick, I, pick I get what other, you mean. Like games any workshop any are very. W- this is our thing and nobody touches it but us we only we cherry pick people and they do what we tell them to do well they've got a lot better they've got a lot better at, yeah. at being open well, anyway this isn't a this isn't a fucking there's tabletop. thousands of novels out there just pick one and just make a fucking yeah. movie film or a series out of it it's very fleshed out there's so much lore also, there. also give me Age of Sigma stuff as well well it's meant to be coming it's meant to be coming good apparently good apparently it's a thing Um, I had I had a really cool like brainwave as well. As soon as I said aliens, I was just thinking of aliens with chainsaws. <laughs> um, tell me I'm wrong in thinking that sounds fantastic. Look, uh, I've day... not watched Aliens in a couple of years. I need to rewatch it. I fucking love that film. The day I can sit in a cinema or anywhere in my house and see a... <laughs> sit in your bedroom like you are right now and just fucking watch Warhammer like you normally do and anyway, see, only it's not see miniatures. See someone it's... <laughs> shove a chainsaw through an alien or something would be pretty cool. Yeah. B- right. Fucking bring orcs back into it. Orcs have been swept under the rug in 40k. Well, they do really, I like orcs. They do really good cinematic trailers. All they need to do is give that to someone, say, look, we want a full film of this. Thanks. See you later. Release <laughs> it. Make more money conquer the world, and then we're all drowning in plastic. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> plastic crack. There you go. Right, okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> right. Um, wow, we've talked a while, a long, a long time about this, so we yeah. should probably just, like, cover off the trailers that came out for this week as well. Yes. Okay. Trailer trash! <laughs> right, okay. Trailers. First one, we've mentioned it quickly. The King's Man. Not the Kingsman, the King's Man. The King's Man. There's a new trailer out. It's a long trailer. This looks really good. Like the new trailer has restored a bit more excitement for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it looks like, really it good. Seems really interesting. They seem to be showing the protagonist a lot less in this one, which might be a good idea because it looks like Ray Fiennes might actually be the lead in this film. Yeah. Um, and like Ray Fiennes is a great actor. 
Um, yeah, but that guy who's playing Rasputin, what's his name? It's Reese, uh, Reese Ivans. Yeah. Man, I thought that was Rasputin himself. I thought they just got bloody Alan Moore out of writing comic books. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought they just put him on stage. Like, his version of Rasputin looked fantastic. And it's yeah. got Stanley Tucci in, Ray Fiennes, like we said, Matthew Good, like we said, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in this somewhere, Gemma Atherton. Uh, but it's different uh, enough to what we got with the Taron Edgerton films that yeah. I think it's going to be a good refresher for the series. Well, that's what like that's what my issue with the second one was. It was just the first one all over again. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I still think they shouldn't have brought Colin Firth back. I think it. It damaged that film, bringing him back and like fridging all the other characters. They literally fridged one of them. Um, yeah, literally. well, not not fridging. That's the wrong term. They put him on ice. Yeah. <laughs> fridging is a whole different thing in screenwriting and everything like that. Which I actually want to do a, a, an episode about at some point. Um, is the term fridging and stuff like that. We'll talk about that some other time. Yeah, but yeah, I think this looks different enough that it will bring a bit of energy back to the franchise. Yeah, I think it looks good. I'm looking forward to it. And it will be a good film for cinemas to open up to again. Yes. Uh, next film. I've put Palm Springs on here. So have you seen the trailer for Palm Springs? Nope. No, okay. So this is a new comedy. It's got um, Adam Sandberg in from Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Lonely Island. And it's also got the mother from um, How I Met Your Mother... Um, she plays um, Leonardo DiCaprio's first wife in Wolf of Wall Street. What is her name? Uh, Kristen Miloti. I had to get that up. Um, and it's sort of like a Groundhog Day comedy. So they keep dying, or whenever they die or fall asleep, they wake up again, and they're at a like wedding at Palm Springs type thing, and it's all like drugs and like it just looks bizarre. But apparently it's, like, really good. It's getting amazing reviews so far. Apparently it's, like, the best version of this time loop story that we've got in a long time. Interesting. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. I I'm going to check it out. I think it's releasing online. Okay, um, cool. Hulu. It's a Hulu original film. So I don't know where that's going to premiere in the UK. But that is... So initial release, it had a short cinema run in January, apparently. Or maybe okay. that was when it went to festivals and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's coming out pretty soon either way. It's got J.K. Simmons in there as well. Sweet. Cool. What's next? Sound. Uh, next, The Tax Man. The so tax you collector. have seen the trailer. For <laughs> the Tax Collector. I wrote The Tax Man. <laughs> the tax That's how much man. of an impact this trailer had on me. I thought this looked fine. Yeah. Nothing more than fine. It it's David Ayer's new... Mafioso Shia LaBeouf is playing a bad guy in LA street gangs. Yeah, it's a bit of a return for Shia LaBeouf, really, isn't it? It's it's like, well, it's not a return because he's done loads of stuff. Last year had Honey Boy and Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh yeah, um, true. true. Um, this seems like a different type of character. Like I said, he's playing like a mafia boss type thing, or he's like the boss of all the mafia bosses. He's, he's collecting tax taxes collector, from every gang in tax collector of mafias or gangs mm. in a certain place, isn't he? So, but David Ayer did End of Watch, didn't he? With Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. Um, I've not seen any like the last. I believe well, that was him. Like David Ayer to me, I've like. Taking Suicide Squad out because it wasn't really his. It was David vision. Ayer. Um, the last thing I saw was Fury. Yeah. So I've not seen so anything since. Fury, Fury was a good film, but like this feels like more like what David Ayer does. So he did Bright as well, didn't he? Oh, so, like, yeah, he did. Do Bright, Bright yeah. was in like like L.A. gang culture, but it was also fantasy. End of Watch is like a, a police. Um, a police film with Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Peña and set in the most dangerous neighbourhoods of LA. That's literally the pitch that it's got here on Google and Wikipedia. Um, like, it seems like this is the type of film that David Ayer does is just sort of sort of like gangster films from LA. I don't know if like that was something that he's had a lot of upbringing with. He was from Illinois, so Illinois, however mm -hmm. the Americans say it. I Illinois. don't know. Uh, but he did Training Day, so this is like his wheelhouse. 
Yeah. Um, but I thought it just looked fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it I agree. It didn't really strike anything special to me. No, I agree. I agree with you. <laughs> uh, and then we'll blitz over the other two trailers that came out, and then I've got a sneaky little bit of a rumour for you to finish up Ooh, on. Ooh, sneaky little bit of rumour. So we got the trailer for Hamilton as well, uh, probably the biggest musical stage production of our generation it's like eight hundred dollars for a ticket it's absolutely mental it's a worldwide phenomenon even though it's not left the us i don't think um but it's coming to disney plus now so everybody will be able to watch it now finally instead of just listening to the soundtrack apparently it's great i'm i i don't think i got swept up in the hype as much as anyone so if if, if nobody knows i used to be in like musical theater stuff growing up so I like, I do like the odd musical every now and again when it's done well, um, and just respecting actors on the stage and stuff like that. I'm all for. So I am glad that more people are going to get to see this, and it is from what I've seen and everything like that. It is a fantastic musical production. I don't think it's necessarily worth quite all the hype that everybody's. I think the reason it's just caught the zeitgeist is because musicals were getting kind of stale and they were for the older generation our generation didn't really care about him but then lin-manuel miranda put rap into a period piece <laughs> <laughs> and i think that's literally the only reason why like it, it was just trying to teach kids american history through rap but also he wasn't getting many jobs at the time so we wrote a musical that he could be the lead in at the same time yeah is apparently what i've heard a lot at the same time but lin-manuel miranda is fine <laughs> but i am excited for this so yeah cool okay Sound. it cool. wasn't wasn't ray fisher from who plays cyborg in hamilton i have no idea <laughs> he was on the stage i think it might have been in hamilton and then finally greenland gerard butler in another disaster film and it looks shit surprise surprise what what's he doing with this career? What is Gerard Butler doing with his career? And you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> End of trailers. <laughs> Greenland looks shit. Okay, and that's us done for trailers. Uh, the the story that I had for you um, that I've just seen pop up was um, well breaking breaking news. Yeah, yeah, it's literally an exclusive from Collider. Um, the boys showrunner confirms Jeffrey Dean Morgan may be joining season three. Let's go. Let's okay, go. I want to know who he's going to play. Um, yes. Patton Oswald is also in season two. Very That's good. That's new casting for it. Yeah, I really like it. I can't wait for this. I'm really excited. It's really. I really want to read the comic books as well now. Yeah, I kind of don't because I don't want to know what goes on in the comic books. I like <laughs> I like just going off the TV series because yeah. it's, an, it's contained, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Uh, the, the only reason I want to read the comic books is because they've got other storylines going on in it and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which I don't think they'll let, like get round to in the TV show. No, cool. So I just kind of want to get like a, a, a bigger world, you know what I mean? Yeah. But seriously, that's us for this week. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at GetRealPod, and you can email us, GetRealPodUK, at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you head over, follow us, like us, um, of email us and just let us know what you think what are you excited Question for mark? um share us with a friend uh share us on your socials just uh let us take over the world take over your feed just <laughs> if you enjoy listening to it and you have a friend that will think you think will like it then send them over give us a recommendation we want to grow and we are eventually when things start to go back to more of a normal we will do video content we promise <laughs> <laughs> eventually hopefully one day the world will not end before we do that hopefully hopefully <laughs> hopefully we don't have another local lockdown where we live because that's the thing in the uk now we've just got <sighs> to really hope and keep fingers crossed but anyway where can people check us out chris and what should they do you can leave us a favorite a five-star review leave us a review a written review and we might read it out on the thing. Share us with as many people as you can, like Sam said. We're available anywhere that you listen to a podcast. You listen to this podcast now, so just keep listening to it where you're listening to it. But also, tell your friends where they can listen to it. If they're like, oh, no, I don't have that, be like, they're on Spotify. Everybody has Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. Everybody has Apple Podcasts. We're on uh, Deezer. We're on bloody Amazon Podcasts. I don't know. <laughs> We're on everywhere that we can be on right now. 
very good. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that We're on Spotify. Him. We're on Spotify. <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> that came to such an abrupt end, and it was like, Sam, save me. <laughs> Uh, we're ending this how we started it <laughs> yeah literally so anyway that's us done for another week uh, thank you very much for listening take care stay safe wherever you are in the world and wash your damn hands wash your f- damn hands everybody <laughs> wear a mask believe in masks and believe in gloves because apparently some people out there don't <laughs> apparently <laughs> But yeah, take be safe. Uh, take precautions. Idiots. Look after yourselves. That's the main thing. Look after others around you. Let us know what you'd like to see next week, unless we already have a topic done. And we will catch you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking diabolical. <laughs>